blackmail I can get right now. Early, you gotta get in early. I'm trying to go celebrate in the end zone with a wide out today, man. What's up? You gonna turn around and be like, dang, who's that running? Dang, so true. How you get down here so quick? I was trying to get some blackmail on y'all, man. That's Hold it over your head. Like, say something bad about Coach Mattel here, too. <laughs> Woo! Let's get it! Woo! Oh! Good detail. I got two defenders. I need to be here, man. I got to be there. It's not optional right now. Intentionality, detail, and a physical mindset. Right now, that's how it carries over the team. It's always us. Right? Like, any, any time it's like, what's not done better, not what can they have done better. Hey, let's scoot back, y'all. Scoot back, scoot back. Oh, hey, we got to scoot back, y'all. There we go. Yeah! Good round, boy. Let's go, E. There you go, Dom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah! Yes, sir! Hey, that's a big time play right there. Good job, man. Good job. We, uh, yeah. we on front. You with the head buster? Yeah. Are you the ops fan? I don't know. Oh. Go ask your coach, man. Go ask your coach, dog. I'm going to you, y'all. Hey, Ink. Hey, Ink. Hey, I'm going to get you to do me a favor, bro. These cleats killing me. In my office, bro, right up there, bro, I got some shoes up there. Can you go grab them for me? They great. They should be right in the middle of the floor. Yeah, these cleats got to go. I wore them all last year, but I don't know. I guess I'm getting older. What, last year, they ain't bother me. Yeah. <laughs> you full of crap, bro. Right? Oh, yeah, we got to make the trip. We got to make the trip. Let me make something I have to watch on. These calories count. Everybody clapping! Yes, sir! Team Robbins up by a million! Yeah! 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 Big, little, little. Big, little, little. Oh, pop good, be tight. Little, little. All my steps is little and powerful. Little, powerful, explode on my hip. These calories better count, baby. Here we go. I put it on my Okay. Okay. Sprint to a shimmy. Sprint to a shimmy. Hey, wait, keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight. Good, there it is. There it is, boom. You got ready to stack it. You took this fast vertical and I'm on high ground. Count it back. I love it, baby. I love it. Feeling is mutual, serve them a platter nobody was used to. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. What you should. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's bring it. Bring it, Daddy. Great tone in. Let's go. Great tone in. Let's go. Yeah, there you go. Being violent. Let's go. 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 Effort, effort, effort. Run around all day, okay? All right. Let's go. Keep playing confident. Let somebody feed off your energy, okay? Create your energy and let somebody feed off of you, okay? okay? Let's have a great day. Let's go, CG. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep building. I need some rips. I need some punches. Get that ball out. Great turnovers, okay? Let's go, bro. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's have a great day. Let's go! Hey, Starkers! Starters! Let's go! Skate! 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 Go! Play it in! Play it in! Go on, get it out! Good job! So when you get close, when you get close, don't go like this, alright? I can look up and be able to time it, okay? So don't panic. I can't look back this way, but I can look up and, and time it, okay? Jackets and robbers! Jackets and robbers! Pass! 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 Kick it! Kick it! Go get it, Reggie! Hey, good job! Yes! Yes! Hey, great job! Great job! Feeling good, I'm feeling good. Can nobody take me down now? Oh my god. They got me on the microphone today. I don't care. It's the best day, Wes. We're gonna get a lot of reps. There you go. I know you are. It's a good hat, man. It actually fits my head. I'm like, that hat, what is this? Are you posing as Prince? Are we supposed to think you're Prince? Are you Prince or Kanye? I don't know. Here we go. 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 Now, hey. Good. So, hey, you see what I'm saying? I have a visor on. Protecting that ring. Yeah, I'm not wearing it. No don't you usually have a glove on your left hand? Yeah, I didn't wear it today. Huh. Came here so you could feature your athleticism. Here we are, featuring your athleticism. You know what they say, when in doubt, throw it deep.
Yesterday was the start of Baylor spring football camp, and today we're going to dive a little bit deeper and talk about one of the key position movers heading into the spring, which is Bryson Jackson, the former Will linebacker prospect in Dave Randa's defense, and he played Sam linebacker in Matt Rule and Phil Snow's defense. Uh, he's making the move to the star position, obviously in Baylor's defense. That's become famous because that was the position Jalen Petrie played. Uh, last year, Al Walcott played that position as well. And now Bryson Jackson, who decided to return to Baylor for another season, used an extra year um, to come back and try to enhance his, not only just enhance his draft stock, but I think end on a more positive note uh, during his career at Baylor. So we're going to listen to a few quotes from him. I'm going to talk about him a little bit. Um, and we're going to get to know and get to uh, get a little bit of a read on how Bryce Jackson is going to do at this new position, the star spot. So uh, let's listen up to uh, some of the things they had to say about that role. Well, I'm currently playing star right now, so uh, that's a new position. Um, I, it's a lot like Sam when I first came in years back, but um, something I'm used to. And just like I said, like I've always wanted to kind of be in a position like to help the team the most. And um, so just being there, I'm grateful for Coach Renan and letting me play that position and Coach Powers allowing me to go out there and compete at it. So we're going to see how it goes. Uh, just coverage, uh, coverage adjustments and uh, communicating with the safeties and the corners and uh, letting the linebackers know what's happening. So uh, usually when I was playing before I was up front and uh, communicating with the D linemen and the linebackers behind me and uh, a lot of it was pass rushing and stuff like that. So now I get to add a different twist to it uh, and come from the coverage standpoint. So it's really fascinating because this is a guy who, when we've watched him play over the past few years, his role's been all about pass rush. It's just been about getting after the quarterback, finding a way to wreak havoc in the backfield, uh, a lot of communication with the defensive line. That's been um, his focus, right? It, it's been all about that and obviously having to stop the run a little bit, but more so just about creating havoc in the backfield. Can you be disruptive? Can you get sacks? So now moving to the star position, uh, he mentioned coverage is going to be the biggest key and I, I think that's the biggest question mark for him. Uh, we know he's going to be able to blitz at a very high level. Uh, we think he's going to be able to make tackles in the open field and against the run at a pretty high level as well. Uh, but is he going to be able to hold up in coverage? And does he move well enough to hold up in coverage, uh, especially if Baylor's going to run more man principles uh, with Matthew Pilage uh, as the defensive coordinator? Um, and I, I think that's an area that he has a question about as well. Like That's something that he knows he needs to work on. That's an aspect of his game that uh, he knows he hasn't really used a lot. And so now he's going to have to really put that on display this spring if he's going to want to end up actually uh, winning uh, the starting spot at the star position. So very excited about it. I think getting a leader on the field is obviously a great thing. Um, and finding a guy like Bryson Jackson, who we know can do certain things at a very high level, if you can really develop him, I think he could turn into a very good player at the star position and definitely bring a new level of size and physicality uh, to that position as well, which would be very, very intriguing. So last year, as we know, uh, this team struggled. There, there was a lot of adversity that they faced and a lot of things that um, when challenges hit them, they were unable to respond. Dave Randa mentioned, you know, locker room issues, mentioned uh, just the culture of the program had been tested in a way that it, it I guess, hadn't been tested the year before. And so now this year, it's kind of getting back to this mindset. And that mindset is pound the rock. And that's something that this team is clearly trying to live by uh, every single day as they try to get better heading into the 2023 season. Bryson talked a little bit about that, so let's go ahead and listen to what he had to say on that. Um, it's just about pound the rock, man. So every day, um, you gotta you got to come in and you got to be focused. And um, you got to take all the distractions out and uh, focus on being better, focus on uh, being there for each other. And I think that's something that we definitely can improve on as a team. And I think that we definitely have improved on it since then. And uh, that's been the whole interaction with this all season is just getting better as a unit, redefining our culture, and or defining and redefining about what Town of Rock means, what shared commitment means, and, um, fighting with adversity and having each other's back means. So uh, that's important. And we got the mature guys in the room to do it. So Pound the Rock, he mentions you know, attacking everything from the classroom to being better people off the field to 
you know, playing together, playing hard. This just, it's an all-encompassing term. A term that really just, it's the lifeblood of this program. It's something that Dave Veranda wants to see built every single day. He wants every single player to want to build it every single day, every coach. Everybody just needs to be in line with this Pound the Rock motto. Um, and, and I think one of the things that you know, Bryce had mentioned was you know, they're not only trying to define their culture, but they're also trying to redefine their culture. And that's been a key this offseason throughout the spring workouts, you know, whether it's those early practices or early lifts or the conditioning in the afternoon uh, leading into the actual you know, getting the ball out on the field in the spring. Uh, this is something that's going to be really important to this group, just making sure every day they come in focused. They're um, not thinking about distractions. They're uh, focused on everyone being better, not just themselves. When they leave the football field, it's about being better people off the field, being great at academics, really just focusing and attacking life. Um, that's what Pound the Rock means. And this is something this this you know program really needs. And it's something that I, I think we saw last year. Everyone saw it. There were just cracks um, in the armor, and they were unable to respond to those. So now when adversity hits, will this group be more prepared to attack those challenges and persevere and get through them? Uh, that's what I, I think Pound the Rock means. And that's something that really important to this group, really important, obviously, to Bryson Jackson, and something that's going to be really fascinating to pay attention to as we move forward into spring football. But thanks for listening today. This has been Grayson Greenhead from Sickum365.com. Welcome back to another Quick Hit Bears. Today we're talking about Sawyer Robertson. Uh, he obviously talked to the media yesterday. He's a big-time transfer prospect from Mississippi State. The guy who Baylor landed this past offseason, and when he entered the transfer portal, he was an immediate priority for the Baylor staff. Sean Bell, Jeff Grimes, Dave Aranda, they all really wanted him. Uh, they wanted him to join the fold. They were going to do everything they could to recruit him and to win a battle against many other schools, but primarily it came down to a battle between Baylor and TCU. He visited TCU during the, his offseason, you know, when he decided to enter the transfer portal after leaving Mississippi State. Uh, he went on a visit to TCU first, which was during their preparations for the college football playoff national championship game. He then decided to take a trip to Baylor, and obviously after he visited Baylor, the rest is pretty much history, he gave his commitment uh, to the staff, and now he's a Bear. Now he's going through his first spring ball as a Baylor Bear. Uh, lots of things they said going through media time over the weekend, but the big one was that he talked about his competition with Blake Shapin and something that obviously many people are going to be talking about this entire offseason, who's going to win this battle. Uh, he addressed it, and addressed it uh, really nicely uh, in a way that makes you think that these two definitely feel like they're both very, very talented, and we're going to see a lot of good things from them to come. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, competition breeds excellence, and Blake's been really helpful throughout the whole process. I mean, when I first got here, he was one of the first guys that talked to me. Um, he's been helping with the offense the entire time, so it's just been really good. And I'm thankful that he's been, he's been there, um, kind of helping me throughout the whole thing, learning new offense. Okay, so obviously a lot of good stuff here. I think the first thing to mention is the simple fact that it's great to hear that Blake Shapin has really taken uh, Sawyer Robertson under his wing a little bit. You know, I know they're both still close in age and everything like that, but still Blake Shapin is basically a guy who's been in this scheme a long time and is teaching him some things about the offense that he needs to learn. Uh, because Sawyer's coming from an air raid offense. He's coming from a system that didn't do a lot of the things that Baylor does in their wide zone scheme. So there's definitely a learning curve there. And I think Blake Shapin going out and, and really helping him and molding him to continue to develop, uh, that's a great thing. And I think it's a big step for Blake Shapin as a leader, which is something he really needs to improve on from last season. Uh, I also think it's just important the whole fact that Sir Robertson is learning a new scheme and something that I think everyone has to remember that these things don't come really easily. Now, you watch Baylor's offense, it seems like one that you should be able to get in and be able to learn relatively easily, um, but when you're used to doing a lot of things from the shotgun every snap, it does make things a little bit more complicated. So it's something that Sawyer's definitely going to have to work on throughout this offseason. I, I have full confidence that he will be just fine, but still right now, as it's this fresh, it's going to take some time for him, I think, to get to the point where he's extremely proficient in this offensive scheme. 
Next up, he talked a little bit about his decision to come to Baylor, but it was more so from the side of why didn't you just choose to go somewhere where you could be the quarterback one immediately? And so he mentioned a few things as to being the reason why he didn't do that and why he felt like Baylor was the right choice for him. I would say that it's just it's just competition. I, I like to I like to compete. Um, I guess I guess I wasn't really looking for a place that was like you can walk in and be the guy day one. Um, and so obviously you know I chose to come here because I felt like uh, I would develop as a quarterback and I'd be leaving here the best um, quarterback possible, no matter um, no matter the timeline on on when I actually get to play or not. So, I mean, this is another situation where you look at it and you just kind of think to yourself, okay, so he could have gone somewhere, just been the immediate starter, just been a guy who stepped on campus, your guaranteed starting role, but instead Sewer decided to go to the place that best fit him, but not just best fit him for this year. And I think that's the really important perspective to keep if you're a Baylor fan and just for people who cover Baylor as well is that he didn't come to Baylor just thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to have this starting job guaranteed to me. I'm going to come, I'm going to work on my craft, I'm going to get better as a quarterback, and this is the place that's going to develop me the best. And not just for this year, but for his career in the long run. I, I think that's just one of those long-term views that we don't get to see a whole lot from transfers these days because a lot of guys want to come in and have immediate rewards. Sawyer's definitely not like that. While I'm sure he wants to start, there's no doubt about that, I also think it's important to put that perspective that, hey, he would be fine just learning, just getting better, just becoming the best version of himself as a quarterback. Um, that's exciting for all Baylor fans. I think going through spring in the early part of it so far, I've seen the Sora Robertson guy who's very, very talented. Uh, at 6'4", 210 pounds, he definitely brings a different frame and physicality to the position. Uh, he's a quality athlete, a guy who can make all the throws. And now it's just about adjusting and learning Baylor's scheme and really fitting in uh, to that culture and becoming a leader on this team as he and Blake Shapin just battle. Uh, they're going to battle every single day from the spring, and, and in my eyes, it's going to last through the summer and the fall. We're going to see a great battle between two really, really good quarterbacks. Uh, right now, my take is I think Sora Robertson has the higher ceiling as a prospect. I think that when you look at the NFL, he's kind of more what you're looking for at that level. And a guy who can make all the throws, has great size, has good athleticism. But I do think at this point, Blake Shapin still is the favorite, has the maturity, has the experience in Baylor's scheme that it makes me think right now he is the odds-on favorite to be the starter game one for the Baylor Bears next year. Thanks for listening today. Uh, we're going to talk, of course, more later in the weeks with more quick hits on multiple players who talk during Baylor media sessions throughout the course of spring football. But thanks for listening today. It's the second year that Caleb Collins has led the outside linebackers as a position coach with his players saying he's a great teacher. Collins has spent the spring working to improve his group and he's loved what he's seen so far, especially when they review the tape one night and see a similar play the next day, something that truly bodes well. Covering in meetings, they apply it to the field. Like today, we talked about like an exact play that Kyler got, and we was like, man, if they do this again, it's gonna be a pick. And Tony went out there today and caught an interception on it. So like a lot of that makes me stay up late at night because I know the stuff that I talk about in meetings, they're gonna take it to the field. The spring game just a few days away next Saturday at McLean Stadium in Waco. Tell them it's cause I like the